It made 127 kills without ever being seen. In 1940, Allied commanders were helpless against night raids, desperate for a machine that could see through darkness, outpace threats, and kill with a single strike. The result, Northrop's P-61 Black Widow, was unlike anything before. Purpose-built radar in its nose, silent guns, and a glossy black finish nearly invisible under searchlights. But behind its unbroken string of victories lies a story of urgent invention, radical engineering, and the crisis that forced everything to change. What made the Black Widow unstoppable? Night fell hard over Europe in 1940. German bombers pressed their attacks through darkness, slipping past defenses that had no answer for the unseen. Searchlights swept the sky, anti-aircraft guns fired blindly, but the Luftwaffe's night raids struck London and other cities with devastating precision. Each raid exposed a dangerous gap. The Allies had no fighter that could hunt in the dark. Commanders watched as waves of enemy aircraft vanished into the black, free to drop their bombs and escape untouched. Day fighters, built for sunlight and clear skies, were useless once the sun set. Pilots flew by instinct, sometimes guided by ground-based searchlights or the brief flicker of an enemy's exhaust, but these were desperate measures. Most never saw their targets until it was too late. Losses mounted, not just in aircraft, but in civilian lives and critical infrastructure. The British scrambled to retrofit existing planes with crude radar sets, but these conversions were slow and unreliable. Reports from the front lines grew grim. Enemy bombers were getting through, and nothing in the Allied arsenal could stop them after dark. Military planners in both London and Washington realized that a new kind of aircraft was needed, one that could see without light, stay aloft for hours, and strike hard enough to bring down even the toughest enemy bomber. The clock was ticking. Each night raid made the need more urgent. The search began for a fighter that could turn the darkness from a shield into a trap. Northrop's engineers took the night fighter challenge and reimagined what a combat aircraft could be. The design that took shape in late 1940 was unlike anything else in the sky. A twin boom, three crew machine built around a single purpose, finding and destroying enemy bombers in darkness. The central nacelle housed the crew, pilot up front, gunner behind, and a radar operator in his own compartment, facing aft. This arrangement gave each crew member a dedicated role, with the radar operator guiding the hunt through a scope aglow with ghostly blips. The heart of the aircraft was the SCR-720 radar, a 30-inch rotating dish set in the nose. This system swept the sky with a focused beam, pinpointing targets up to five miles away, even in pitch black or thick cloud. The radar operator tracked incoming aircraft and talked the pilot onto the target, closing to within a hundred yards before the enemy ever knew they were there. Red lighting in the cockpit preserved night vision, letting the crew keep their eyes sharp for the moment when radar gave way to guns. Power came from two Pratt and Whitney R2800 engines, each delivering about 2,000 horsepower. The P-61 stretched nearly 50 feet from nose to tail, with a 66-foot wingspan and a combat weight tipping 29,000 pounds. Internal tanks carried 646 gallons of fuel, enough for long patrols over enemy territory. Tricycle landing gear made for safer night landings, a nod to the realities of blackout airfields. Firepower was as formidable as the electronics. Four 20mm Hispano cannons lined the belly, firing straight ahead. Above, a remotely operated dorsal turret mounted 4.50 caliber Brownings. The pilot could lock the turret forward for maximum punch or let the gunner sweep a full circle, though aiming quirks sometimes forced crews to improvise. Stealth wasn't just about silence. In October 1943, tests in Florida compared olive drab, flat black, and glossy black paint. The results were clear. Gloss black made the plane nearly invisible to searchlights, missed in 80% of passes. From February 1944, every Black Widow left the factory in deep black, its finish polished to a mirror when possible. The result was a fighter that could slip past ground defenses and close unseen, living up to the name Black Widow. By early 1944, Northrop's creation was ready for its first public appearance and soon after for combat evaluation. The tools were in place for a new kind of air war, one fought and one in darkness. A single P-61 Black Widow streaked over the Los Angeles Coliseum on January 8, 1944. Below, 
75,000 people packed the stadium for an Army-Navy show, but as the aircraft passed overhead, the crowd could hear the engines but saw nothing in the night sky. The Black Widow's deep black finish, tested just months earlier in Florida, made it nearly invisible under the glare of searchlights, a feature soon standard on every airframe. Within months, the first production P-61s arrived in England. The 422nd and 425th Night Fighter Squadrons began their missions in May and June 1944, just after D-Day. Their orders, intercept V-1 flying bombs and hunt German raiders in the darkness. Crews quickly learned the new fighter's strengths and its limits. The radar could guide them close, and the cannons could bring down a buzz bomb, but chasing fast German twins like the Ami-410 proved tough. The Messerschmitt could push past 400 miles per hour, outpacing the Black Widow's best. Spare parts ran short as the fighting intensified, and by the Battle of the Bulge, only a handful of P-61s remained operational. The promise of the new night fighter was clear, but the European skies demanded more than just stealth and firepower. The Black Widow's next test would come far from the fields of France. Pacific skies brought a different kind of challenge. The distances were vast, the weather unpredictable, and Japanese bombers often struck under heavy cloud or moonless nights. On outposts like Moratai and Saipan, Black Widow crews of the 6th, 418th, 419th, and 421st Night Fighter Squadrons became the first real answer to these threats. The 418th, stationed on Moratai, quickly built a reputation. They logged the highest number of victories for any P-61 unit, mastering the art of radar-guided interception in conditions that would have grounded lesser aircraft. One night, their crews tracked and destroyed three Ki-61, Tony fighters, in a single sortie an achievement that spread quickly through Allied ranks. Patrols often stretched for hours over empty ocean, yet when enemy aircraft did appear, the Black Widow's radar and firepower proved decisive. Japanese pilots, used to slipping past defenses, now found themselves stalked by a plane they couldn't see until it was too late. The P-61's presence in the Pacific didn't just protect bases and bombers, it turned the night into Allied territory setting the stage for legends yet to come. August 14, 1945. Over Ieshima, the crew of Lady in the Dark, Captain Lee Kendall at the controls, Lieutenant Shearer on radar, patrolled the black Pacific sky. The war's end had been announced, but orders still sent them into the night. Their SCR-720 radar picked up a lone target, a Japanese fighter weaving low, dropping chaff in a desperate attempt to shake pursuit. Kendall closed in, Guided by Shera's voice, the Black Widow's engines barely a whisper over the surf below. The enemy pilot, unaware of the American's position, banked hard, trying to vanish into the darkness. Kendall matched every move, never firing a shot. The chase pressed lower, tighter, twisting through the humid night air. Suddenly, the Japanese plane struck the ground in a cloud of debris. No bullets fired, no tracer arcs, just the relentless pressure of an unseen hunter. That night, Lady in the Dark claimed the final, confirmed aerial victory of World War II, a kill won by nerves, radar, and the silent threat of a plane that was never seen. In the years after the war, the Black Widow found a new mission far from the battlefield. In 1940 Beach, a fleet of P-61C models assembled at Pine Castle Army Airfield in Florida, ready for a different kind of challenge. Scientists from the Weather Bureau, NACA, the Army Air Forces, and the Navy joined forces to launch Operation Thunderstorm, the first project to fly directly into severe storms for research. These aircraft carried specialized instruments, turbulence sensors, transponders, and cameras to track every jolt and shift. Crews flew stacked at different altitudes, 5,000 feet apart, plunging into the heart of thunderstorms. Over three years, they made 1,362 storm penetrations, recording data that revealed how updrafts, downdrafts, and lightning shaped the life of a thunderstorm. The findings laid the groundwork for modern weather radar and safer flight, proving that the Black Widow's design could withstand even nature's fiercest turbulence. The P-61 Black Widow's influence didn't end with its last combat sortie or its final storm flight. When the Air Force retired the last Black Widows in 1954, 
their legacy was already built into the next generation of American interceptors. Northrop's F-89 Scorpion, the first US jet designed from the outset for all-weather defense, borrowed the three-crew layout and radar-first design philosophy that had set the P-61R apart. The concept of a dedicated radar operator, once novel, became standard for Cold War interceptors chasing threats in darkness or cloud. The Black Widow's proven formula of heavy firepower, advanced sensors, and robust airframes carried forward into the jet age, shaping the backbone of continental air defense. Its record, 127 enemy aircraft destroyed, 18 V-1s intercepted, set the benchmark for what a night fighter could achieve. Even after the last Black Widow left the runway, the blueprint it established guided every American all-weather fighter that followed.